Welcome to the video Traditional Animation Tools, the first video in the Traditional Animation video series. All of these videos have been done by Annie Rodrigue, a wonderful traditional animator who I feel is more skilled to show you the way to create animations traditionally. I, however, will continue to do the voiceovers for all the videos in the series. So Annie's going to begin by going over some of the animation tools that you would use when animating traditionally in the software. And a lot of these tools get their names from actual practices in traditional animation. So the first thing she's indicating is the onion skin tool, and we've seen this tool before. So in the drawing view, you're only ever able to see the drawing on a specific layer and cell in the timeline. However, if you enable the onion skin feature, you're then able to see drawings of the same layer that occur both before and after the currently selected cell. Um, if you pull the blue handles beside the red playhead that are flanked on either side of the red playhead, you're then able to extend the number of previous or next drawings that you're able to see. Um, the drawings that are previous, so the drawings that are before your currently selected cell are indicated in red, where the drawings to come, so the next drawings, are always indicated in green. You're also able to add more previous and next drawings through the view menu at the top. So the next feature that Annie is bringing our attention to is the light table feature. So in the drawing view, once again, you can only ever see the drawing of the layer in the cell that you're currently on. However, if you enable the light table feature, you are then able to see all the subsequent layers that are underneath the current layer that you're on if they are enabled in the timeline, so if they have a check mark in the timeline. However, if you uncheck them, as Annie is doing right now, you can see them disappear from view and everything is in washed out colors just as if you actually had a piece of paper on a physical light table. Um, all the other layers underneath it would appear slightly lighter because they're under a sheet of white paper. So the drawing that is currently selected however remains in full color so it's the most obvious and you're able to separate it from the other layers so that you can work on it easily. So in the camera view you're always able to see what's underneath your current drawing once again if they are selected in the timeline or enabled in the timeline. So I'm going to have to put the brakes on Annie's video here to explain two things to you first. So she just clicked on the X sheet tab and that brings you into the X sheet view. So this is the first time that we're ever seeing the X sheet. So what an X sheet, otherwise known as an exposure sheet is, in the traditional animation industry is a set of instructions that the animator writes to the cameraman who will then photograph the um, inked and painted cells. So the X sheet in Animate and Animate Pro behaves slightly differently. But what you need to know is that for every uh, layer that exists in the timeline or for every module or almost every module that exists in the network view, there exists a column in the X sheet view. So what Annie is about to do is mark the different cells in the columns that each represent a cell and a layer in the timeline um, with certain identifiers. Um, the identifiers she's going to use are K, B, and I. K standing for key pose, B standing for breakdown, and I standing for in between. Um, and then just to explain to you briefly what those things are, I'll use the bouncing ball example. So when, when you try to animate a bouncing ball, you never start with the first frame and then draw the second frame and then draw the third frame. The way the animation works is you draw the two key poses first. So let's just say it'll be the first frame and the seventh frame. On those two frames, you'll have the ball in its starting position and its end position just for that sequence. Then the place where the ball arcs, so the apex of that curve, 
you would mark as the breakdown because it's the most major transition. It's when the ball goes up in the air and is about to come down at the same time. And so you might put that breakdown pose uh, on frame four so it's exactly between one and seven. Um, the breakdown does not necessarily have to be exactly in the middle of two key poses, but in this instance, it works out that way. Then frames two and three and drawings five and six are going to be called in-betweens. And in-betweens is probably where motion tweening got its name from, I'm guessing, is because it's those filler frames that you put in to make a smooth transition. Okay, so let's continue watching what Annie's doing. So she's right clicking on the first frame and going to the menu item mark drawing as key drawing, breakdown drawing, or in between drawing. And she's selected key drawing and you can see a red K that appears beside drawing number one. And then she repeats the process for the last drawing in her sequence. Then just as I described before, she makes the central drawing number for her breakdown, which is marked with a B. And then she's also made drawing number two a breakdown drawing, but just to show you that if she then selects in between drawing, it disappears. So in between drawings are not marked with any specific letter, they remain blank beside. So in the timeline view, she right clicks and selects the menu item, drawings, create empty drawings. So you can see where the menu item exists in the right click menu. So an empty cell has been created in the timeline. And as you know, a cell is like a container for a drawing. Then if we go into the X sheet view, you can see that a unique drawing has been created in the same column in this case, which represents a row in the timeline. And we know it's unique because it has its own number, number 48. And you'll see later on in the next video why it's so important to create an empty drawing. So Annie has brought up the drawing of a carrot. And now behind the select tool menu, she's selecting the tool reposition all drawings. So the way that this tool works is if you reposition one drawing in any given layer, all the other drawings in that layer will also be moved by the same X and Y increments. This also works if you rotate the drawing. All the other drawings in the same row will be rotated by the same number of degrees. It also works for the skewing option. So you can see that the carrot has been stretched or warped. And you'll see why this axe is an important tool because when you work in the traditional style of animation, you have to hand draw everything. And so imagine how much work it is if you've accidentally drawn something in the wrong place or someone decides like to move something, um, you'd have to reposition each drawing individually of a given animated sequence. This way you're able to do some of those things in a bit more of an automated fashion, which saves a lot of time. So lastly, um, Annie's showing that you can scale a drawing in any given row with the reposition all drawing tool and all the subsequent drawings in that row will also be scaled. So that's it for the tutorial traditional animation tools. Stay tuned for the next tutorial basic traditional animation.